Thank you. Um, and thank you for accepting my paper for this uh, session. I saw this as a, an opportunity to actually go back to, uh, I mean, relook at, at uh, an experimental project that I did in 2008 and then never really worked further on. And, but I saw this as a, as a good opportunity to, to actually kind of pick up on, on what was what was actually actually uh, about this uh, project. And um, it was um, a small excavation of a reconstructed Iron Age longhouse uh, that had been standing for like, yeah, 30 years and then been demolished and then left in the ground. Uh, and then I made a small excavation of this. Um, and um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm gonna talk about. Um, because I think this, this uh, project in some ways uh, kind of uh, also treats the, the uh, the otherness, at least, of, of, of the past. Um, not in the sense that uh, how we as, as archaeologists maybe work with, with otherness, but how uh, other people work with otherness of the past. Um, because um, it, there's a very active use of, of, uh, of, uh, of the otherness of the past, because uh, in these uh, reconstructed houses, people have been living uh, during the summer holidays uh, for yeah all the uh, time that this house has been standing. Um, and they're using this as a kind of an antithesis to the modern life and kind of a, uh, yeah, going back in time and then looking at your modern modern life in, in, a, in a different way. Um, so kind of the, the aim is to, to look at the, how this uh, otherness of the past of the estrangement, uh, how it uh, take a form in, in this uh, very uh, practical engagement with the, with the past uh, and how it forms a new hole in, in these uh, modern families' uh, lives. Uh, and how they, yeah, they use this uh, otherness to, to learn from. Um, so kind of uh, the historical background is, uh, there's this research center in, in Lyre, which was uh, founded uh, in 1964, uh, where uh, this, this uh, reconstructed Iron Age village was uh, built, so in 1964-65. Uh, and they built uh, five Iron Age longhouses, and, and it, this was made made out as a, a really uh, kind of a strict research project where each house had had uh, a different kind of roof construction or wall constructions, and they were really uh, directed the uh, research uh, projects of all of these houses. Um, but as it turned out, um, I mean, yeah, the plan was to to burn off these houses uh, further on and then kind of excavate them. Um, after 25 years or something, and uh, but as it happens, uh, the public was really interested in what was going on here, and, and uh, so they they actually opened the place for visitors, and it turned out that this kind of hands-on experience with the past was a uh, very uh, kind of giving way to to learn people about about the past. Um, so yeah, they only burned down one house, and <laughs> the rest of the houses never really uh, was used as research projects uh, anymore but just used as, as settings for, for kind of the mediation of, of, uh, of uh, the Iron Age life. Um, yeah, sorry. So that's, that's a kind of the, it was made out as, as a really strict uh, kind of a period um, around the birth of Christ um, and based on, on like uh, proper archaeological <coughs> findings. Um, so in this um, kind of using the houses, uh, they invited families to, to to live in the houses, um, and in the beginning it was this kind of testing the houses. Do they actually work for kind of uh, living in them? Can you actually survive um, having a fire on, on the floor? And, and how do the animals affect the indoor climate and, and things like that? Um, but also this this kind of activity turns uh, turned into more kind of a mediation to to the families because I mean there was a lot of interest of. of uh, I mean, participating in this activity. Um, so it turned into kind of a mediation um, activity to, to learn families about life in, in the Iron Age. Um, but at the same time, it, it, it was also used as a reenactment uh, for like all the other visitors at the center coming and, and experiencing this uh, living Iron Age village. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, in the beginning it was very ad hoc uh, thing and I mean, bring your friends and uh, come here and we have a fire on the floor and everything is happy, happy. Uh, but then 
since uh, 1974 is more kind of formalized and organized and the I mean every summer since that there's been families living in, in the houses for one week at a time uh, and it's like 25 to 30 families each each year uh, doing this um, and I mean in the concept there's a uh, they're kind of told to to live the Iron Age life in the, during the opening hours of, of the center, but otherwise it's it's actually very open to kind of the families coming with their own projects and in, in kind of experiencing the the, the past uh, and the the prehistoric life or the life in in pre prehistory. Um, so people come with the kind of a, their own ideas and and about what this this past uh, or this Iron Age is, and they're not really. I mean, they have a um, there's an employee at the center that guides people to kind of a, well, you have your fire on the floor in this way, not to burn down the house. And uh, when you cook it at the fire, you do like this and this. Um, but they don't they don't act as experts in Iron Age. I mean, they're just there to, to experience. And in that way, it's, it's, it is very open to kind of, they can put their own projects into it. Um, so there was, um, I mean, it's it's an actually an interesting uh, activity. Um, uh, and uh, there's been several anthropological investigations of of, uh, of this phenomenon, um, mainly kind of uh, circulating around the the question: Why do these families do this? Um, and I mean, it is kind of quite interesting. Uh, I mean, now I just picked out like three uh, saying quotes, but there's hundreds of, of similar quotes to um, how they use this uh, this past or prehistoric life to kind of mirror their own uh, uh, modern life um, and how this um, I mean in, in the search, of, search of, of what they think as an authentic life uh, compared to their own uh, modern life um, they, they try to find this authenticity, authenticity in kind of the, the, the otherness and the difference from, from their, their modern lives um, but again I mean I think it's very important in this concept that they they actually define the, uh, the the degree of authenticism themselves. There's nobody actually telling them this is the, the right way to do it or this is the right Iron Age uh, thing. Um, and I mean, of course, it varies from from week to week because they define it themselves. But um, they also they're very keen and very enthusiastic about like living this authentic life. And and sometimes they're really more strict on, on kind of getting it right than than the, the employees at the center. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of the background. Um, so, coming to the the experiment, um, this is the 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 site. Um, it's uh, called House Four, and it was built in 1965, and was standing there until 1990. Uh, and yeah, you can see different stages of it. Uh, this is in uh, 84, and this is in 90. So, kind of when it was demolished, um, and. Um, when I came to the side, it was uh, kind of you could still see the outlay of, of the house as a small kind of lumps and bumps uh, in the ground, and um, the excavation trench was four by four uh, meters uh, and placed around the southern entrance. Uh, so I both had areas kind of inside and outside the house. That was uh, that was my uh, kind of my main interest at that at that time. Yeah. So um, when we dug down, I hope you can <laughs> kind of. Uh, see this um, the archaeological features in, in here kind of the, the black dots are the, the dark features and, and the brown ones are, are the clay floor uh, so we have a, yeah, an, an entrance uh, quite clearly I mean it was very easy to kind of uh, uh, translate the, the, the archaeological features into the, to what it has, had been and when, it, when the house was standing yeah um, so yeah, as you can see, there's both areas outside, which is kind of the, the blank spot or the blank areas uh, in the south of, of the trench. And then kind of inside the house is, is uh, where the clay floor and the, the stone uh, sitting there or the stone thing. Um, and I mean, maybe the kind of the original idea was to, to look at the archaeological features and how does this reconstruction uh, actually uh, show itself in, in the ground, but it turned out that it was actually the findings that were, were more interesting in the distribution of, of the findings. Um, because there was, there was lots of finds in, in this, this ground, and the, most of them could actually, could actually be directly related to, to the activity at, at the site. 
Um, so I kind of split them up into uh, there's uh, the Iron Age finds, which was related to kind of the activities you could um, expect in, inside the house, um, or related to Iron Age activities, uh, so cooking and chopping wood and uh, having a fire on, on the floor. So it was pot shirts and charcoal and pieces of flint. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's a, I mean, quite a clear uh, distribution that uh, we have most of the Iron Age finds uh, outside the house. Um, and as they were very fragmented, all these uh, the pot shirts, for instance, um, I interpret this as uh, garbage that's been lying around and on the floor and then been swept out uh, through the door. I mean, you can see kind of a, um, a pattern there uh, going spreading from the door and, and outwards. Um, oh yeah, there's like object. <laughs> uh, but then if we uh, kind of compare it to uh, all the modern finds, there was uh, uh, like beer, beer capsules, uh, candy paper, uh, cigarette uh, butts, um, plastic bags, uh, <coughs> small pieces of toy, toys. Um, then uh, another distribution is actually showing up uh, because most of these uh, these modern finds are related to to what you can. I mean, these were un unexpected in an Iron Age uh, context, at least. Um, they find inside the house and. Well, there's still some some pieces outside, but um, these were, were like very small fragments of, of plastic, for instance, or uh, gla glass shirts and porcelain uh, that was uh, kind of a uh, more um, how could you say like yeah, more invisible than than the the finds. Kind of the spectacular modern find was found inside the the house. Um, yeah, you have this uh, the shoelace, for instance, as well, uh, beer tops, porcelain of a coffee cup. Um, and if I compare these, these uh, kind of uh, archaeological finds with the, the anthrop anthropological investigation of, of this phenomenon, there's a, there's a clear, um, I mean, there's a, there's a clear interpretation of them um, because um, from the an anthropological uh, investigations of, of uh, these families, it turns out that, that uh, of course, they're, they're really enthusiastic about living the Iron Age life, but they also describe it as a really hard life. It's, it's hard physically, it's hard, hard uh, psychologically as well. So and especially the third day is kind of uh, the tipping point uh, where, yeah, everything is annoying and it's uh, just too much. Um, and then people uh, describe how they, they go outside the village and take a candy bar or a cup of coffee or uh, check the mobile phone and, and uh, but it, it, it is very often described as cheating so in, in kind of a that this is unexpected uh, or that's not what people expect from this Iron Age uh, kind of behavior so it's, it's, it's sometimes called uh, cheating in a negative way and sometimes positive or, or at least not negative but, but they, they often use this, this word about uh, this kind of practice about returning to, to the modern uh, commodities and, and I mean, obviously, kind of a, all these modern finds could pr are probably related to to this kind of cheating uh, activity. Um, but at the same time, the anthropolo anthropological investigations also describe this as uh, that the families often uh, experience the, the the cheating as, as shameful. That they don't really uh, kind of uh, live up to the expect expectation that that the other families or the other members of the group have to to kind of living the proper Iron Age life, and therefore it's always kind of um, happening in in the I mean hiding uh, I mean out out in the forest or outside the village or inside the house in in the darkness of the house, um, and I think that's that's kind of what we can see in, in difference in, in distribution pat patterns that. I mean, the Iron Age uh, finds are kind of put on display outside the house, but all the modern finds are uh, hidden inside the house. And well, I forgot to say that, that a lot, of, uh, some of the, I guess, a whole group of the modern finds are actually put in, in the inside the house and, and kind of almost buried in the wall trench. So kind of really hiding them <laughs> away in the most dark dark spot in the house because just inside the door, it's, it's really, really dark. So I'm also interpreting this as a, it's people that really know this house uh, that they have been hiding these uh, these finds, um, but I think it's it's in this uh, 
context, it's it's important to kind of uh, uh, highlight the, the the kind of the dynamics behind this uh, kind of a feeling of shame that that uh, this uh, that you don't live up to the, the common expectations uh, of uh, of the group. Uh, and it's very important that it's, it's the group that is defining these expecta- expectations. It's not the center or the the kind of the the professional archaeologists that, that kind of say what what is uh, what is an irony's life in this context. Um, and I think this also kind of the the thing that the Iron Age uh, finds about, find outside outside the house. Um, can maybe also be interpreted as a, as a, a way to kind of both convince other people, but also yourself, that you're living this authentic life because you you're treating the the Iron Age garbage in an authentic way, kind of sweeping it outside or out uh, through the door, which is kind of what you could maybe expect uh, at least in in kind of imagining the Iron Age life. Um, so I think this this is kind of a a very concrete example of, of how this otherness of the past uh, can be used active, actively um, by, by families uh, kind of a, yeah, in a way to, to learn more about themselves actually. So this is, has not really anything to do with the past as, or the Iron Age as, as a kind of defined Iron Age, but it's, it's the pastness of the past or the, the otherness of, of, of the, this, um, this context that, that are really important. And, here, the, I think the bodily engagement is also really important, and the things that they they kind of surround surrounded about because uh, or surrounded with, because well, you could ask why do do these people don't just uh, go camping, for instance? I mean, it's the same kind of life. I mean, you cook over a fire and you live in a sleep in a very bad bed or something like that. But I mean, no, I think here the past and the otherness of the past is really important in this kind of activity. That that uh, this distance from from your own life, and um, I mean, they're re- wearing, for instance, uh, different clothes, and that I think that's important in, in kind of this feeling of, of the otherness. Um, but what is also interesting is that, that sometimes it gets just too overwhelming in, in kind of the, the otherness, uh, and then they, they, I don't, I don't know, go back to to kind of things that they know to find a kind of a, find some safety and some kind of a, yeah. This is kind of, and then you can go back to the Iron Age again, um, and I think yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. So to conclude, I mean, the past is used in 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 modern life actually in this way, um, and the archaeology showed that this, and the anthropology showed that there was also kind of a really concrete uh, strategies to survive this otherness of the past. Um, but also that the past is, is kind of Im- it's an imagined past that is within the group, and not something that's kind of uh, put on top of, on, uh, on or imposed on, on them by professionals in, in that way. So maybe this is a kind of a, I mean, it's, there's a tendency to, to use these reconstructed houses as, as a, I mean, trying to answer questions related to the past. But actually, I think there's more kind of a knowledge uh, hidden in them to say something about what how we actually relate to the past and and the otherness of the past. So, thank you.